And she, I said, what happened? She said, all I did is ask him to take out his books. Is that so bad? And I said, I don't know. She said, please, and thank you. She goes, I asked him to find I said, what happened? She said, he turned around and he looked at me and he said, quote, quote, I ain't taking out my books, you. Gonorrhea, syphilis, dripping whore. I told you, right? That's legitimate AP bad language, is it not? Come on, you gotta give that kid some props, right? Yes? Sixth grader at an 11th grade level? For sure, he would be in the gifted program, would he not? And talented or just gifted? Gifted and talented. They have to go together, gifted and talented, and just be one or not the other. By the way, I gotta tell you that one got my attention, because the truth is, I was waiting for an F bomb, that's what I thought was gonna come. I was waiting for an F bomb or a middle finger, right? So I looked at the lady Pat and I said, a sixth grader? She said, can you believe? I said, wow. She said, you wanna know what I said back? I said, I don't know. <laughs> she goes, oh, you do. And I said, okay, what'd you say back? She goes, nah, let's role play. I said, what do you mean let's role play? She goes, well, you've been Mr. Roleplay Man all day. Let's roleplay. You be the kid and I'll be the teacher. I said, you want me to be the kid? And she said, yeah, you be the kid. So I said, I wasn't thinking because it was late. It was like this. It was like late in the day. It was like, and I'm out. So I said, okay. So she looks at me. She goes, sit out, right? So I did. I sat. And then she looked at me and I looked at her. And she looked at me and I looked at her. She looked at me. She says, go ahead. I said, go ahead what? <laughs> she says, call me those things. I said, lady, listen, I want to tell you a little something. Okay, I live in New York, but we hear stories about Texas. <laughs> I mean, y'all kill people down here for way less than that, right? They got people in Texas on death row for breathing wrong, right? So I'm not calling anyone any care. Then in the God-given voice that only some teachers you pay, you know, also there's certain teachers, there's the teacher voice and the teacher look, right? Some teachers can look at a kid a certain way. The kid's just like, I got to sit down. And you're like, why? And the kid's like, I don't know, but when that lady looks at me like that, it just means I have to sit up, right? I didn't get the look or the voice, but Pat and Tyson, she had the voice. And the voice, I'll do my best with the voice. And she looks at me and she said, I said, call me those names now. You know that voice? Now, from the time I was a little kid, I've had a really strong mean streak inside of me that I've worked really hard in my life and put it away. Or when you want it to come out, you're demanding that it comes out. Guess what? So I looked at her and I said, fine, I ain't taking out my books, you. Gotta be a syphilis dripping whore bag. I can bag on the end. <laughs> Just to leave no doubt that I was worse than any kid she ever had. <laughs> so she goes, you want to know what I said back to him? I said, I do. She goes, are you sure? I said, I do. She goes, I walked right up to that boy and I got right in his face and I looked him directly in the eye and I said,
said, oh, you're my bum. And he took out his books. <laughs> now, what I didn't tell you about that story is how she started it with this, with this, which is with this. She had already, she and her colleagues combined, had already written him up that year. Ready for this? 57 times. 57. All right, let me make a little statement right here. If you write 57 for your 404 on a child, they should fire you on the spot. Why? Because you're dumb. Did I not say that clear enough? Okay, let's say it like this. If you take that milk for a headache 56 days in a row, and it does not make your headache go away, simple yes or no question, are you an idiot for taking the 57th day, yes or no? Like you have utterly no common sense, what then? How do you get your 56 detentions in the school year? Stop laughing, administrators, because if you stop signing off on them, the teachers can't write them. Say to the teacher, no. For this, this nonsense on my desk. Get back in that classroom and teach them kids. Now, man, crazy, right? By the way, that always leads other people to tell me their stories, right? So I have another lady, she told me that a kid told her that this is the brown. Kid told her to go after herself. I'm not gonna say the word, but he told her to go after herself, right to her face. Go after herself. I said, what? What'd you say back? She goes, oh no, wait, he said he did not go after herself. He called her a mother. That's another story. So let me do the go after yourself. <laughs> so the go after yourself story, that happened with my friend Laura who was co-teaching. A kid told her to go after herself. And she responded by looking at her and she goes, I will be doing that later, but it's none of your business. <laughs> You did not just say that. She goes, did I just say that? I said, you just said that. She goes, I can't believe I just said that. You didn't hear it, right? I said, no, I didn't hear it. She goes, me either. But the mother after, right? So a kid in the Bronx called his teacher a mother after. I said, what happened? She said, I just turned around and I very calmly told the truth. Well, you got it half right, but I don't have any children yet. <laughs> so if you don't get it, you learn from it. Yeah, crazy, right? Like, diffuse, diffuse. If you're looking at true, truly diffusing kids, there is no better way to diffuse than catch it, set it down. Take what they do, take what they say, teach a lesson out of it. My wife was a high school math teacher for 10 years. She doesn't teach anymore. She stays home with our kids now full time. But um, when she was teaching, I, um, <laughs> I, I'll never forget, I came home from work one day and my wife had her head down on the kitchen table. She worked at, you guys have probably heard of the name of the school. It's in Rochester, I live in Rochester. And where my wife taught was at a school right outside of Rochester. It was the school where all the kids would get kicked out of all the schools around Rochester get sent. It's called Helper Day Treatment Center. I don't know if any of you guys heard it. It's in Webster. But anyway, so my wife taught there. And she, um, and, okay, let me back up. Any math teachers in here, where are you all at? Math people? Okay, so my wife was a math teacher. And forgive me, because I'm not a math expert. But um, the, 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 the lesson she was trying to teach that day was basic conversions, right? Like leaders to middle leaders, that whole thing. So I get home, my wife is already there, and her head is down on the table, and she's doing one of these. And I couldn't tell if she was laughing or crying. Have you all ever had one of those days where you're doing both of those, right? Where you're crying. And I said, hey, and she looks up at me, and sure enough, she's doing both. She's crying, and then she's laughing at the fact that she's crying. And I said, what happened? And my wife looked at me, and she said, I snapped today at school. And I said, not possible. You never snap. And by the way, she does not ever snap. But my wife and I are complete opposite human beings. Like I am emotional and crazy and all over the place and super ADHD. My wife, calm, collected. Like the world can be blowing up around my wife and she's like, what's up, how are you? And I'm like, smoke another one, bro. Right? She's an artist, she gets past the But anyway, um, so, so I said, um, what happened? And she said, Jamil was in rare form. Now let me back up because you know how when you're a teacher or you work in a school, and you have a spouse or significant other, like they don't know your whole class. I mean, you know how they learn certain names, right? Like there's certain names that your spouse knows really well, correct? Right? And the two that I used to hear about all the time from my wife were Jamil and Miguel, Jamil and Miguel, Jamil and Miguel, for two totally different reasons. And she would talk about Jamil because he drove her crazy. And she talked about Miguel because she loved him. She would say to me, I don't get why Miguel is at our school. He is the nicest kid you'll ever meet in your life. He says, yes, ma'am, and no, sir, and please, and thank you. Anyway, she says, right, she in 11th grade, Jamil was in rare form, and I lost it. And I said, how? She said, he just wouldn't stop. And finally, I looked him from across the room, and I was like, dude, Jamil, how do you talk all day long? Like, you don't even breathe. <laughs> and then out of pure frustration, 
She looked at Jamila. I guarantee some of you have asked this question of your students. It's a really ridiculous question, but we ask it sometimes almost by mistake. Do you ever, for one second, think about what you're going to do with your life? Look, when you get out of here, what are you going to do with your life? Right? And Jamila looks at my wife and goes, Boom. what I'm going to do with my life is not there. Shoot. I guarantee you today, I already made way more money than you do. What? How, by the way? How? Yeah, drugs, right? I sell drugs. What? And of course, now all Jamil's boys are like, oh, 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 he sells drugs. Oh, you know the friend of the annoying kid? So everyone knows the annoying kid, right? And then there's the friend of the annoying kid, who often ends up more annoying than the original annoying kid, correct? Because the friend's the one is like giving birth, right? Oh, My wife looked at me and she goes, Brian, I lost my mind. And I said, how? She said, I walked up to Jamila and I actually started laughing. She goes, yeah, and I started laughing. And I said, you? <laughs> you. Jamila, you? Did you actually say that you sold drugs? And Jamila goes, yeah. And my wife said, Jamila, that might be the single dumbest thing I've ever heard in my entire life.
cannot disrespect you. Why? Because you're 45 and they're 11. Can we leave it at that? No longer. Every single disrespectful moment is a moment for you to teach. For example, from across the room, Mr. Mendler, what? This lesson sucks. Now, can we all agree that that would be a disrespectful thing for a kid to say to their teacher? Of course it is, right? Nobody likes the kid saying that. Now that we got that out of the way, there's two different ways to handle that. Way number one is a version of this, and I hear it frequently. This lesson sucks. No, it doesn't. Yes, it does. No, it doesn't. Yes, it does. No, like, what am I, 10 years old? <laughs> Way number two. Mr. Mandler, what? This lesson sucks. Whoa, 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 whoa. Time out, time out, time out. I hear you. I hear you. You want to know something? I'm not trying to act like every lesson I teach is dynamic and amazing and incredible. Want to know a really cool statistic? I teach 180 days a year. I teach in the middle school or high school. You know what that means? Seven different classes a day. We'll call it six, just to be nice. 180 times six is 1,280 classes that I teach throughout the year. You think they're all going to be incredible? Because I promise you they're not. There are going to be some of them that, according to you, suck. And I hear you. That said, just like I would never yell from across the room that some of your reading skills are really low, which by the way, some of them are, or some of your math skills are a total nightmare, which by the way, some of those are too. See, I would never yell that from across the room. But when you yell that, Mr. Miller, because that would be embarrassing to you. And see, my goal is never to embarrass you. You want to know what you could have done instead? What could I have done instead, Mr. Miller? You could have waited until class ended. And you could have pulled up a chair and you could have sat down right next to me. And you could have looked at me and you could have said, Mr. Mendler, admit it. You thought there was going to be a snow day today, didn't you? <laughs> There's no way you planned for our class today. There is no way. I mean, bro, I've seen you teach and when you're good, you're good. But today, you hand out a boring worksheet while we walk in and then you wonder why we disrupted your class? Stop wondering, dude. I mean, you're on our case all the time about us giving you 100% effort. Well, I got a question. What about you? Don't we deserve 100% effort from you? Don't be yes or no. You know what I would have said back? There should have been a freaking snow day. I got robbed. <laughs> you know what I would have said next? You're right. And I'm sorry. Thank you for calling me out on my nonsense. And see, not only would I have listened to you, which I would have listened to you. I would have. But see, on top of listening to you, you would have actually gotten what you were asking for, which was for me to reevaluate how I teach certain things. And by the way, for the rest of you, all of you in this room should feel really grateful that you got me for a teacher. Why well, should we feel grateful that we got you, Mr. Miller? Because I'm pretty sure most of the rest of your teachers are not willing to stop mid-lesson to teach you how to tell one of their colleagues that their lesson, quote, sucks appropriately. But I am willing to do it. Everybody else, back on page 10. That is how it is done at disrespect. Every single referral form that is written for the word disrespect, you could take that same exact five minutes that you're writing that referral form and teach the kid how to be more respectful. Every single one. Make respect. Make it something you do on a daily basis. I was working in Des Moines, Iowa recently. And see, normally when I walk into school, you want to know something really sad? Most kids in most schools in America have really crappy manners. They do. You want to know how I know this? Because I walk in the room. You know what they all say to me? The minute I get one foot in the class, a bunch of kids, they don't know me. A bunch of adults, they don't know me. You know what the kid says? Across the crossroom? No, I don't say it like that. I say it like this. Who are you? Why are you here? Are you her husband? And I'm always like, no, but she wishes. Boy sitting over there, and he's kind of eyeing me, right? 